Welcome back to our course on SharePoint Foundation 2013. In the previous section, we started looking in some detail at the integration between SharePoint and Office. In this section, we're specifically going to look at Microsoft Excel. But just before we do, I want to show you one other aspect of how this integration can be made to work. And I'm going to do it from within Microsoft Excel. So let's suppose that I want to open an Excel workbook and I need to get it from the document library on our SharePoint site but I've never actually accessed that document library from Excel before. If I click on open and go to other web locations although I've got a couple of other web locations that I've used I've never used the document library from our SharePoint site that we've been looking at. If I click on Browse, I'm able to browse to a SharePoint location or in fact any other location that might be accessible to me. At the moment, as you can see, file name is blank. But if I paste in there the URL of that document library, and there it is, and click on Open with all files selected here, it will show me all of the files in that library, provided, of course, I have access rights. If I specifically wanted to open an Excel file, of course, I could choose one of the Excel file types. But I know that at the moment I don't actually have any Excel files in that library. That's why I've chosen all files for the moment. So if I click on Open, and there are the documents. They're all Word documents, so I'm not going to open them in Excel. But that just shows you how straightforward it is to access that particular document library provided you know the URL and of course provided you have authenticated access to that library. So I'm going to cancel that for the moment and get back to Excel. Now one of the reasons that we've started looking at the integration between SharePoint and Office quite early on in the course is that you may well need to upload data into your SharePoint installation into your sites. You've already seen how to upload files into document libraries and to be fair you can use all sorts of things like copy and paste and so on in order to populate lists. But the facilities within SharePoint are a lot more sophisticated and powerful than that. And I want really to show you here how you can get data from Excel into SharePoint. Now apart from actually uploading the data itself Obviously an element here is the ability to share the contents of this workbook. This workbook is a list of our current projects. We have five projects at the moment. That list shows the company names, the names of the projects, the project codes, a description of each project, and then the value in US dollars of each project. I want to get that information into our site. And one way of doing it, of course, would be to save this workbook using Save As and then storing it in a document library. I probably wouldn't save it in the PM Standards document library. I might create a new document library, perhaps a finance one in the finance area, or maybe just make it one of the general documents, which may be of general interest to people in terms of being able to see what our current projects are. And of course, if I wanted to save it in that way, I could go into File, Save As, go to Other Web Locations, and then paste in the web location of another document library in order to do it. But what I want to do on this occasion is to show you a more sophisticated level of integration, because one of the things that you'll probably do quite a bit is to import Excel data into SharePoint. And that's the first thing we're going to do with this data. Now, take a close look at it. We've got a workbook called projectlist.xlsx. It has six rows. The first row, the top row, is a heading row. And then there are five columns of data. The first four columns contain effectively text data. And the fifth column is the value in US dollars of each project. So let's go into SharePoint and see what we can do with this. So first of all, what I decided to do was to create a new subsite, and this subsite will be for our current projects. So we have at the top level our SPF 2013 top level site, and then we currently have three subsites. We have current projects, 
Team Talk and then Acme Refurb. So let's set about importing that Excel spreadsheet. One way of doing it is to go to Gear and click on Add an App. Now in order to find the appropriate app, one thing you can do here is to type Excel and then search and you get probably just that one match, Import Spreadsheet. Click on Import Spreadsheet. What is going to happen here is that we are going to create a list, or rather SharePoint is. And the first thing we need to do is to give the list a name. Now, as I'm sure you realize by now, most of these things you can change later on. But when you're naming lists, libraries, etc., adding descriptions, remember that it's usually not only you that's going to be accessing these, so try to give them meaningful names. And then finally, let's browse to that workbook. Click on Open. And then finally, click on Import. Internet Explorer Security gives us the usual warning. We're going to click on Allow. Now at this point you get the Import to Windows SharePoint Services List dialog. And I need to explain a couple of things about this to you. First of all, if you look at Range Type, there are three options. You can either specify a range of cells. So what we could do in this case is just say that we want to import the cells from A2 to E6. Or you can say, I want to import a table range. So in that case, I'm going to import this A1 to E6 as a table. Now, of course, at the moment, it's not set up as a table. I'm going to turn it into a table in just a moment. Or you can say a named range. Now, again, we haven't given the range a name. We could give that range of cells, A2 to E6, a name and import it as a named range. Now you may wonder why I'm making a point of this. The point is this. If you actually do this as a table range, then SharePoint will use the first row in the table as the names of the fields in your list. And therefore, you've got a bit of a head start really on setting the list up because it's going to identify the five attributes of each of these projects according to the names that you've already assigned. So what I'm going to do on this occasion is go back into the Excel workbook and set that up as a table. And then you'll see the effect of that when we create the list. So I'm going to cancel this. Now I do appreciate that some of you may not be particularly familiar with Excel, but if I select the cells, including the header row, and click on Insert, and select Table. By default, Excel uses the selection I've already made. There's a checkbox in the middle there, My Table Has Headers. Click on OK. And that's now been turned into a table. Now the table name is assigned by Excel. It's called Table 1 by default. I could give it a different name. Why don't I call it something like projects table, partly just to show that I can. And having made that change, I'm now going to close this workbook with that change. Say yes to saving the changes. Now I'm back in SharePoint and I'm going to try again to import that workbook. There's the dialog again. I'm going to use Table Range. Select Range, click on the drop down, and you'll see the only option given me there, because it's the only table in that workbook, is Projects Table. So I select Projects Table and click on Import. And now what you can see is the contents of the Excel workbook have been imported into my list. And you can see that the column names, the attributes in the list, are the ones that have been picked up from the workbook. And that's really the way that I prefer to set up a workbook if I'm going to import data from it into SharePoint. So that's one illustration of the integration 
of SharePoint to Excel. There are a couple of others I'd like to show you, but I'm going to cover those in the next unit. So please join me for that. Yeah.